Hey everyone, Cynix here, and I just wanted to do a little video talking about some of the tools that are available in Photoshop. So I normally use Painter for all my digital painting stuff, uh, but I just wanted to talk about some of the tools that Photoshop has to offer because some of them are pretty interesting. So I'm just going to bring the toolbar over here. This is the default toolbar from uh, Photoshop CS5. And none of this stuff that I'm going to show off was in the original kind of older versions. It's all been added in the last few years. So I didn't really get a chance to mess with it when I was first learning to digital paint. But I've been seeing a lot of digital artists today are using a lot of these interesting tools. So the main one I'm going to talk about is Liquify. And they're all kind of in this area. Uh, but before I do that, I'll just mention some of the other ones real shortly. Uh, there's like the spot healing brush and the thing all these brushes have in common is that they're all meant to be used for retouching photographs so like this tool it's supposed to be used for getting rid of say blemishes on your skin or something you know kind of standard retouching stuff but you can use it for some interesting things um, say I didn't like this line here it's actually a bit uh, this this cut in the metal is a bit off center and I don't know let's, let's just say I want to get rid of it so I can actually just paint over it with this tool um, it just kind of block over what I want to kind of mess with and voila the, that, that crease is actually gone now there's some like uh, glitches here and there that you can notice and it might be better to you know actually just paint over it but for quickly seeing whether you like something or don't uh, this is kind of an interesting tool uh, maybe these ones on the leg I didn't really like those ones that much so I'll get rid of those at least I'll like dumb them down a bit so they're not as noticeable um, but anyway I think I'll keep the one on the body but let's get rid of these ones for now just for our, our I think I like it better like this all right, so we got rid of those, and I think I'll get rid of these handles on the arms too, because uh, someone mentioned a good crit, and that was that they didn't really blend in that well, and they didn't really look that great. So there's a couple tools we can use. One of them is the patch tool, and this tool is pretty interesting. If I was to just say select it like this, I can actually take the patch tool, and it just lets me take that selection and replace it with another area from the canvas. So I can, you know, replace it with the metal, whatever. Uh, but I just want the background. And this is a lot more useful when you're dealing with complicated backgrounds and you just want to quickly mess with your painting, uh, but you don't want to have to like redo an entire background. Uh, so you can just kind of do that. And for whatever reason, the way this is set right now, um, it's set to like create this kind of soft blurring effect, which is definitely useful uh, for most applications. But for this uh, piece, since we have like this really hard edged metal stuff, uh, we don't need that. So let's just go in with a different tool and we'll just use the healing brush. And we could kind of use this like the clone brush. Otherwise, it just kind of selects from one area and colors into the other uh, like the clone brush does. But if we set it to replace, um, th that'll just kind of make this clean and easy. So we'll just get rid of that altogether. So there we go. We got rid of it on one side. We'll get rid of it on, on the other side. Just kind of selecting a gradient part that's even with it and stuff like that. Now, obviously, I'd have to repaint some of this stuff. I can't do it all with magic. Um, so if I wanted to real fast, just kind of mess with it a little bit let's see i don't really want to waste a bunch of time on the video you know messing with this stuff because that's not what the video is about but for the next part i just wanted to talk a bit about the main purpose of this video and that is the liquify tool which is not over here i don't know why i was looking for it over here um it's actually up top and i'm gonna move this camera thing way up here for a second there we go way up to the top and if you go to filter and then go to liquify. I guess you can also just use shift control X, but you know, who's going to remember all that? So just go to liquify. And this is a really interesting tool. Let me move the camera back down. So I kind of got a 100% view going on here. Uh, but this tool is probably the most interesting out of everything. And you can see I have this big cursor right now. I could probably shrink that down a little bit, uh, a little more. OK, that's fine. So I set this, I turned on my settings here. You can see what it looks like. Here's one side where it's like the standard things. And I'm just using the forward warp aspect of it. You can also try the other things, you know, experiment around with stuff. 
uh, but you can see the settings over here. I turned on stylus pressure and that just gives me a little more tactile control over what's going on. But now to the see what this actually does, uh, it actually just kind of moves things. See, it's kind of weird and it does it in a very smooth and refined way. Uh, which is kind of amazing. You couldn't do this in like digital art programs, you know, years ago. It would look all, you know, weird or pixelated. It just didn't have like the processing power to like do stuff like this and make it look completely smooth. Um, so the main reason to use this is to kind of reshape things. So let's say that you were drawing a person and your proportions weren't quite, quite accurate. Um, say for instance, uh, this, this thigh on the side seems like a little off. So I could just kind of nudge it nudge it around a little bit. I can just kind of mess with things until I get it looking to be the right proportion and matching the one over here. Say that this this arm in general just feels a little big, so I could just kind of mess with that uh, quickly. Just kind of, I would need, I'd need to shrink it down because I'm getting like both sides at once, but I think that looks better. Uh, so let's see, there were a couple things I thought about changing. If I look at the thumbnail, I can see that this whole kind of metal shape, it was just like more cut in, it didn't feel as round. Uh, so maybe I could just kind of cut it in a little bit on both sides. Uh, maybe that side was okay, but yeah, I cut it in a little over there. And obviously this cut in the metal, it's kind of off center. If I look at how the metal's turning, it should probably be centered more over here rather than over here. So let's just kind of move it a little. Just kind of slowly move it across. Ooh, and like that, like that, like that. And uh, let me shrink the brush down. Um, so I'm obviously doing this video live on like a lot of them. So that's kind of interesting. Um, I think I might, to, uh, no, that actually looks about right. So you can just get some idea of what this brush is doing. It's kind of just a great tool for quickly messing with the shape of everything. Once again, the main use is like to fix proportions, especially when you're done with a piece, especially when the piece is highly rendered. Um, you can see I kind of messed up all my lighting reflections and stuff like that. But I could kind of fix them a little bit. Anyway, for now, let's just say okay and see see what the changes are. Uh, so this is what this is what it looks like right now, and you might not notice the changes because they were you know happening over time. You know, it's kind of subtle. Uh, but let's kind of look at the before. You can see all the differences and changes in proportions we've done, especially just that minor shifting in everything in the core. So that's kind of an interesting way that you can play with everything. Yeah, I think I like it better now, maybe. Let's take another example. Another recent piece we did was this uh, ref painting. And obviously the leg was a bit off, you know, stuff like that. Didn't feel quite right, the proportions, because I was so focused on getting my colors right. So let's jump in once again, filter, liquify, and it'll blow this up really large. I wonder if I could shrink this down somehow. Okay, I think I could just shrink this, this whole liquify window down actually. So let me see if I could cram it in here. Uh, yeah, that'll work. So here, now you can see the whole liquify window in one shot. Uh, so let's see, what can we mess with? Obviously the leg's a bit off. I think I want to make this whole section stick out a bit more. I'm going to make my brush bigger. Generally, if you have the bigger brush, then it's creating less kind of damage to the overall structure of things. So I'm bringing out this leg a bit just because it was, it was a bit, I don't know, it's a bit thin. And uh, the head in general was just like a bit large maybe. So we can actually just shrink everything down and you'll see how it moves everything. And it really does a great job of even when you moved everything around, it, it looks like this is the way it always was. You can't really tell that it was messed with. So we'll just actually, let's, let's just see if we could completely shrink the head down. Uh, uh, like that, like that. I think I shrunk it down way too much. It's hard to tell. You kind of lose track of that stuff. Okay. Look at his tiny head now. I just move stuff around a bit. Uh, 
And you could also go back and use this reconstruct tool, and that will just kind of slowly make things back to how they were. So you can kind of brush it around a little bit. If you think you went too far with something, see if you just kind of press down, it'll just go like that or like this. Uh, but I think that's about right. So let's just put OK real fast, see what we've done. Now you can get a look at the final changes uh, before and after. See, so we just kind of shrunk the head down a little bit and changed the leg, made it a little longer. And I think that's slightly more accurate proportion wise. So we're just going to leave it like that. OK, see, before, after, kind of big head in the before. And it just feels slightly more proportional. So that's the main advantage of this tool is just those slight edits. Uh, let's see, what other things have we done recently? We did this paint over of a self-portrait. Uh, we, let's see if we can mess with this a little bit. So once again, fill or go up to the top, filter, liquefy. It's going to bring it up in a window. And then you could just kind of move things. I think the nose could have been moved. Oops, I was using the wrong tool. Uh, maybe just move that up a little, something like that. This is probably getting hard to do. I don't probably have to like use a smaller brush. But you can see how kind of addictive this brush can become where you're just like kind of nitpicking at everything and, you know, having fun, just kind of messing with the shapes of things. Uh, but anyway, let's just say, okay. So what does the before and after look like? You can see how much we moved the nose uh, without it really kind of, without it looking unnatural. If you just looked at it like this, you couldn't even tell that. It looks like all the painting strokes add up. There's no like pixelation created by using this tool. So it's, so it's pretty great. You can see the before and after. Anyway, I think that's about it. Um, hopefully this was an interesting video in showing you some of the Photoshop tools. Um, I just mainly wanted to show this tool off because I plan on doing some more artist showcases in the near future. And I think some people use a brush like this. Uh, so I don't know how often I'll be using it, but I'm sure you'll be seeing it in videos here and there. So try it out for yourself and have fun with it.